Okay, so this is going to be a video on Novichok Nerve Agent and whether or not it actually even exists or not because um, if you've been following the news, and this is the reason I don't look at the news but I've been kind of tempted by this story um, they're saying that the Russian spy or the ex-Russian spy and his daughter and the policeman that were all poisoned were poisoned with a nerve agent called Novichok which is this super deadly um, Soviet nerve agent that was around during the Cold War and it's far, far deadlier than VX nerve agent, the most deadly substance on Earth. Eight times more deadly, in fact. And, um, you know, how can evil Russia be putting this stuff in our country that's going to kill everyone? Right, so, if we actually look at it, Novichok is supposedly eight times more deadly than VX. Now, VX can kill you with 15 milligrams coming into contact with your skin. As I said before, that's an absolutely tiny amount. It's like if you had the tip of a needle, that would be enough VX on there to kill several people. So, Novichok's eight times more deadly, which means you probably need less than 2 mg to kill an adult male weighing 60 to 70 kilograms through skin contact. So basically nothing. So, we're now meant to believe that a nerve agent that is this deadly and has come into contact with three people, two of those people are on purposely poisoned with it, have somehow not died and they're recovering in hospital. You see, this is where this new story sort of falls apart for me. If they wanted to be credible about this, they would have said that the nerve agent used was not properly formed and then they could pick a list of nerve agents and the, it's made people very ill but not killed them because it wasn't properly synthesized in the lab. Um, that's what happened, I'll keep referring to this, but when there was the Japanese Tokyo sort of subway attack using uh, sarin gas, they, uh, the cult that made the sarin didn't make it properly. So where it should have killed about 4,000 people, it made 4,000 people sick because the nerve agent was just as efficient as it should have been at you know, getting onto people's skin and making them ill, it's just it didn't kill them because it didn't work quite right. Only about 12 to 20 people died in that attack. Uh, attack. You know, The majority of people that would have normally died if exposed to a nerve agent and didn't receive medical help fast enough you know, just became very ill sort of headaches, nausea, temporary blindness, things like that. So, to me, this seems very similar to that with this sort of thing. So anyway, going back to Novichok, is it real or not? Well, there's not really any evidence either way. So supposedly during the Cold War, the Soviets came up with, or Soviets came up with a nerve agent that was super deadly. Um, and the idea was it was safer to transport because they could um, have two separate chemicals that when mixed together, it would make Novichok. When it was actually separated, um, it was you know each chemical wasn't all that dangerous, so it was a lot safer to transport than something like VX or sarin or whatever. Where if you punctured barrels of it or whatever else, you leak everywhere and it kills everyone. So um, the idea is that they mix it on the battlefield ready for use, or as they put it into a missile warhead, that kind of thing, and then it's only you know weaponized in a sense just about at the time they're going to use it. Another claim made about Novichok that I'm very suspicious of is that it was able to defeat all known NVC gear at the time. Well, the Soviets had the same NVC gear for the most part as the West, so I don't believe they'd make a nerve agent, you know, just to indiscriminately use that would kill absolutely everybody, both sides, um, that easily. I mean, I know nukes would do that, but... Um, I think what if you boil it down, what that probably actually means is it's designed to erode M17 filters quite quickly. So you need to replace the filter, which you can't do on an M17. That makes sense. Some reports say it can eat through NVC suits. I really don't understand how a nerve agent eats through suits. It's not acidic or you know corrosive. Um, nerve agent, for the most part, just causes damage when it's absorbed through your skin, or you inhale it, or it gets in your eyes, or you ingest it. It doesn't. Um, have magic properties where it will eat through materials. So, what I personally think is that, um, you know, Novichok certainly was not used in this UK attack. What I imagine would have been the case is that some sort of organophosphate nerve agent was used that was not properly formed. Now, if the Russians were trying to kill somebody, um, I'm sure they'd have done it in a much more clever way. Do you remember in the Cold War, when the Soviets killed somebody and they had um, a cyanide capsule in an umbrella? It might have actually been a Bulgarian agent working for the Soviets. But they had, like, a pneumatic umbrella, which injected a cyanide pill into somebody, or a load of cyanide. So the guy, you know, prodded the guy with his umbrella, oh sorry, you know, walk, carried on walking. Um, and he'd injected him with cyanide, the guy was dead in minutes. Um, you know, I'm sure if the Soviets could do that 20, 30 years ago, they would 
the modern Russians would have a much better way of assassinating somebody than indiscriminately spraying nerve agent everywhere that doesn't actually work very well. As other people have said, it's very suspicious with it coming up close to um, the Russian elections at the moment, that Russia will be, do an evil bad thing in the West, um, you know, because the West is so anti-Putin and so anti-Russian. As I said before, the Russians get blamed for absolutely everything. I've got a bit of a nasty cold at the moment, sore throat, so I'm sure the Russians gave me that. I'm sure it was bio-warfare from the Russians. Interesting enough, the White House has already said they're not backing Theresa May on this, claiming that the Russians were using Novichok. Um, another thing is, let's say Novichok was massively produced during the Cold War. Let's say they've had it in the Ukraine and all these other countries in the Warsaw Pact ready for use. When those countries became independent, free of the Soviet Union, that stuff was probably still sitting in their warehouses. It could have gone anywhere after that. Um, not that I think Novichok was used, because clearly this chemical agent wasn't all that deadly if it's not managed to kill anybody yet. But, you know. So. My point is with that, though, is just how you have Kalashnikovs that have turned up all over the world to be used in guerrillas, wars, civil wars, and everything else, where... You know, they were all over the world in warehouses because the Soviet Union made so many of them and the Warsaw Pact and everybody else made so many Kalashnikovs rifles and then they obviously turned up, you know, wherever. That wasn't the Russians directly responsible for that. You could say the Soviet Union, I guess, was responsible and they hadn't had much hindsight over what would happen if their empire collapsed, but they didn't really think about that. But, you know, just as if this sort of agent was all over Eastern Europe, basically, ready for use, Lots of those countries became independent and this chemical agent is still sitting in their warehouses, then yeah, of course. Um, maybe some nasty people got their hands on it, but to me this definitely seems like um, a poorly synthesised nerve agent in the actual attack, because it's made lots of people ill, as nerve agents would do, but it's not killed those people. Supposedly even more police now who have been at the scene have become ill, um, but then they were all fine again, so that's not really how a nerve agent works at least not a working nerve agent, you know, it's designed to be a weapon of mass destruction, kill as many people as possible. So, um, yeah, my personal thoughts on it was that a poison was definitely used, and that poison was probably a poorly synthesised nerve agent, um, so the people who have come into contact with it have become ill, but it's not been very efficient at killing people because it's, you know, not made correctly. Saying it was Novichok used to, um, kill them and you know it failed is a bit like saying somebody had a nuke dropped on the head actually it was Saar bomber you know the biggest bomb ever uh, they had a nuke dropped on the head but they got some minor burns and now they're recovering from those burns in hospital it just doesn't add up and I certainly don't want to be murdered in a war with Russia because our Western politicians seem so hell-bent on starting a war with Russia so there you go there's my conspiracy video if you want to call it that but I do not believe Novichok was used even if it did exist because it's very, very deadly if it lives up to what it's meant to be. Um, and another funny note is the bloke who invented it defected to America, and he gave them all the secrets on how to make it. So if Novichok was used, it's not like the West doesn't have the capability of making it themselves. Anyway, this is my video. If they purge my channel because of this, we know why.